In this lesson, I'm going to share my top tips and tricks to ensure that you have those nice, neat and sharp corners on your pocket. So to do that, imagine this is the external and lining parts of my pocket. And I'm going to first show you the uh, first method and then I'm going to show you another method. So for me, especially at the beginning, it was very difficult to stitch along the edge and then stop and pivot. I always find difficult to find the exact place on my fabric underneath my machine. So when I'm at the machine and I'm stitching, I never know exactly where to stop and pivot my fabric and carry on stitching to ensure that I have the same seam allowance because that's what's important to create those nice sharp corners. So the best way is to mark your seam allowance on the wrong side of your fabric. So I'm going just to take my ruler and just mark seam allowance just at those corners. You don't really have to draw the entire seam allowance unless you want to, but I'm just going to stick to those corners because that's the most problematic place. So here we go. So now I know exactly where to stop and pivot my fabric. Now you can take your lining Place your pocket pieces with right sides together, line up the edges and clip or pin them together. When you are ready, you can take this to the machine and sew your seams. So now you know exactly where to pivot your fabric and continue with even seam allowance throughout. As you can see, I have that stitched. So now to reduce the bulk at the corners, you want to trim the seam allowance. So typically I just trim the seam allowance at an angle and I get about two, three millimeters to the stitching line. So I would cut my seam allowance at an angle going like this. And I would do exactly the same thing on this side, like this. So I leave about two, three millimeters space. That's like an eighth of an inch space between my stitching line and the edge of my fabric. So I'm just going to take my scissors, snip that excess, then repeat that on this side as well. You can turn the pocket right side out. If you want, use a corner shaper and just push those corners to create nice and sharp edge. Make sure you don't push it too much, otherwise you're going to rip your fabric. So just be gentle. Here we go. Then you can take this to the pressing station and press your seams nice and flat. And what I like to do is to roll the fabric between my fingers to bring the stitching to the very top. This will ensure that when I press my seam, I have a nice straight edge. Otherwise, depending on what type of fabric you are using, stabilizer you are using, the seam can roll towards the center of your pocket and when you press it, it gives you kind of curved edge. So you may want to avoid it. So to avoid it, you can simply roll the fabric between your fingers, bring the seam to the top and then you can press it flat. And you're going to do that one seam at a time. 
The next tricky part is top stitching. So if you need to top stitch your pocket or your flap and you are using, let's say, a quarter of an inch or a five millimeter seam allowance, again, it might be very difficult to know exactly where to stop and pivot the fabric. So similarly to previously, I like to draw my seam allowance. This time we are drawing on the right side of the fabric. So make sure you are using pen or a chalk that you can easily remove and it doesn't leave markings. So it's best to always test it on a scrap of fabric. So I'll measure my seam allowance and draw my corners. Here we go. So now again, I can take this to the machine and I'll be able to just top stitch my pocket in place. And I know that I have a nice and even seam allowance throughout. So another trick that I have learned is that if you don't have a corner shaper or you're scared to poke your fabric or you just want to try something different, this is what I've learned, is you take a string or thread. So this is very strong thread, it doesn't break. So if you are using normal thread that tends to break, you may want to fold it twice or even four times, depending how strong your thread um, is. So you're going to have a long, long thread tail. Then when you are at the machine, you're going to saw and just before, so one stitch before you get to the corner, you're going to stop. So you're going to stitch, you're going to stop here, just one stitch away from the corner. Then you're going to take that thread, place it between your fabric, and you're going to place it against your needle. Then you're going to stitch over that thread. So you're going to stitch that remaining stitch. And then you're going to take that loose end, bring your thread to the other side. You want to take it and place it between your fabric inside your pocket. and then you're going to stitch the remaining seam. Alright, once you trimmed the seam allowance at the corner, you can simply turn your pocket or flap right side out. And this time you don't have to use corner shaper. Instead, you're going to simply pull on that tail. So be gentle, don't pull it too hard. Otherwise, you can rip the stitches or tear your fabric. Once you are happy with that corner, you can simply pull that thread away. And now you can take this to your pressing station and again press the seams nice and flat. And this way you have a nice sharp corner. The next method, which I must say is my favorite, doesn't require drawing the initial stitching line at the corner. Instead, you're going to stitch the entire seam. So if like me you are leaving the top edge open, you're going to start at the top and back stitch. So the seam, don't backstitch at the end. So if that's the corner you need to typically pivot, you're going to sew the entire seam, just cut your thread, then you can start another seam separately. Again, you don't backstitch, 
So you're going to sew the entire seam. Don't backstitch either at the beginning or the end. Again, you're going to cut the thread and then stitch the remaining edge again. So at the corners, where you typically would pivot, you don't backstitch. You only backstitch at the end of your stitching. So again, because I'm leaving the top edge open, I'm going to only backstitch here and here. Here we go this is how it looks like so as you can see i have stitched all three seams separately so now i'm not going to cut the seam allowance at the corners i'm going to leave it as it is because i don't want to rip my stitching so instead you're going to fold the fabric along the stitching line so the stitching line is here i'm going to fold the fabric like this and then I'm going to fold it again along the other seam like this so make sure you are folding it along the stitching line and create nice corner the next step might be a little bit tricky uh, when you're doing it first time but just take your time so what I like to do is to hold the corner the folded fabric tightly and then I can turn the pocket or flap right side out. And you're going to do that one corner at the time. So first you're going to take your finger, place it underneath between the fabric. So you are pl placing it underneath that folded corner. So you're holding it now with the other hand. And when you are ready, you're going to flip it to the right side, just like that and this created a first corner so now my first corner is nice and neat i'm going to do that on the other corner so again i'm going to fold the fabric along the stitching line in one direction and then fold the fabric along the other stitching line to create that nice neat corner Again, hold it tightly, take your other hand, place the finger underneath that corner, hold it with your thumb, and then you can flip the fabric and your corner to the right side. So now, again, I'm ready to press the seams nice and flat. Now you can take this to the machine and top stitch along the seams. So if you need to, again, you can just simply draw your stitching line at the corner so you know exactly where to stop and pivot. Alternatively, you can use a stitching guide or use a specific presser foot with a guideline so you can keep a consistent seam allowance. As I mentioned, this method is my favorite because it gives me the nicest, the sharpest corners. However, sometimes when I use very thick fabric or maybe I have a thick stabilizer, there might be a little bit too much bulk. So you cannot really fold your corners nicely. So in that situation, I either use the first method or sometimes I use the method where I pull on the thread tail so again try different methods try which one you prefer and again play with it with different types of fabric stabilizers simply to learn which method works best for you